Hello there. I will start with the route of factories followed by priority empire upgrades and how to do supply runs to buff the production of high-level factories. Plus, many other tips like how I sustain infinite silver, my brigantine ship build, farm for helm materials, and others. The route is done only in Red Isle and Africa. The third zone Indies, even if unlocked full, it seems to me to be a bad investment to rush, at least for now. My route is short, has only 18 stops, but the trick it is we take and buff constant with supply runs the four most valuable factories in Africa, the ones that have the most trade routes across regions. Fill the route collecting those four factories with all others easy access spots for extra coins. I start in bottom left at the fast travel outpost to end up 24 minutes or so at St. Anne Pirate Den with 24,000 coins collected. The preparation before every run can be done in less than two hours. We'll show details about how to do it after route map and empire upgrades needed. You want those four factories I highlighted to be as highest level possible till reach max level 10 with them. Any other factories in route are fine for start just level 4. And any other factories outside route can even stay level 1. It will not affect the route trade routes buff, but you do need to try takeover or co-op all territories in Africa and Red Isle for trade routes to be in effect. The four factories will produce each of them around 4,000 coins an hour when they are level 10 and buffed with delivery supply runs. The storage at level 10, it is 4,500, so consider preparation that will explain further in video. You can do a collecting run every two hours. The whole route is very viable from start. Of course, most payoff will be later when they are leveled, but you can focus target same strategy since start of Kingpin Empire. Now in the Empire overview behind your desk in the Smuggler hideout, you have the Leaderboard and Empire Upgrades tabs. One note about the leaderboard tab in the left side of it is your tier made this season that earns you as reward the sovereign currency as higher tier you reach. I have reached max tier diamond so on me does not show more, but on you should show the next threshold of points needed to grab extra sovereign currency. With that special currency, you can buy the most powerful guns, armor, and furniture from black market. I will show later in the video the black market items. Now to the Priority Empire upgrades. I have the Empire upgrades maxed on what matters, but I will go backwards to show exactly priorities. Ignore the reset time in the left. It is confirmed by developers. It is just a visual bug. Nothing will reset on Season 1. So on the first page of Upgrades Smuggler Operations, you absolutely want to unlock as fast as possible the number 7. That will allow you to get infinite silver by produce gold rum higher tier of white rum. You will generate passively a lot of gold rum that you will sell to John Skurlock, the St. Anne Den leader. We'll explain all that process later in video. It is very simple. The next upgrade you want to reach is the number 15 to unlock the Black Lotus Opium. For the same reason, passively infinite silver. You will sell the Black Opium to the second den leader. The second page, smuggler skills can completely ignore, unless you do event Helm Wager double or nothing. If you want to risk wager, please watch my previous video for a guide, and to know from now, you absolutely want the 10th upgrade to reduce timer need to secure chest. Third and fourth page. Red Isle Connections and Africa Connection. Max them out as soon you unlock the whole route I showed. This will buff income but also reduce costs. Fifth page Indies Connection can ignore, as like said, that zone does not yet pay off nicely. Strongly recommend do not bother with it until you are very well developed in the first two zones, Africa and Red Isle. The last page, it is very important. Prioritize upgrade here as fast as possible, the trade routes profit and supply run duration. Get at least upgrade six and seven for start, but aim to max the page first after other pages minimum priorities. We'll show next how to do in delivery supply run and why this upgrade it is important.
is because those four factories normally produce around 400 an hour, but once you do delivery supply to them, they get a buff of plus 900% production for 20 minutes. All this, of course, if have the empire upgrades I said prioritize. So let's dive into delivery supply runs to the four factories. As you see, they normally have a production around 400 per hour at max level 10. In the middle of the factory, information tooltip, you can see they request either sugarcane, berries, tobacco, puppy for the plus 900% buff. The resource requested depends on what you selected to produce when funded a factory with silver. You will always want to select factories to produce the last tier gold gin or black snuff. That is because in this way, you separate your farm of helm materials to not get bottleneck on supply runs, neither on infinite silver strat. If you select gold gin or black snuff, not only do they produce most coins, but also you can hold the berries and tobacco needed for gin and snuff. Meanwhile, you use puppies and sugar for infinite silver strategy production for rum and opium. By the way, the factory level 10 has a funded duration of two days, which is great as even when you go to sleep, it will produce coins but is very expensive silver cost. So be sure you follow my strategy for infinite silver that I explain a bit later. So the four factories have fast travel very close to them. Is your choice if go brigantine overweight or change ship with higher storage? The factories are very close that me sometimes I do not even bother swap ship. But very important note, there is currently a issue with the tooltip showing you how many resources you need deliver. It actually not accurate you need a bit more, so always have on you 50 more than what it shows like in my example, I bring 250 of each resource, even if tooltip was show only 180. Will not let you buff otherwise. At lower level than 10, they require less than what you see on me. So do not worry, you will able sustain easy a level seven at start. Be very careful, do not click collect coins never while doing delivery supply runs or you will be locked to not be able fast travel more. You want to collect coins when storage is full, in my case, in one hour or so at 4,500 coins storage filled. I misclicked during my Twitch stream to select gold gin on Harufu factory. It will produce higher with gin selected around 4,500 an hour. Now, after we buff Harufu and Jiwei do fast travel in bottom and buff the French ones, fast travel is again very close. Keep in mind with the empire upgrades I mentioned to prioritize for increased duration of supply delivery. Buff will last only 20 minutes, so you want to farm helm materials in mean time to do a total three supply delivery on each of the four factories. So continue upgrades on last page of empire upgrades as soon as possible. As for how to farm helm materials, I will show next though it is pretty simple. Your main source of helm materials is found at the supply network desk in your hideout. Do both liaisons and attacks on easy targets or forts. And remember, you want berries and tobacco reserved to sustain permanent supply delivery to factories. And the others, sugar plus puppy kept for infinite silver strategy that will point out after supply network farming helm materials. They remove temporarily the helm mark. So the liaison roving with delivery to some boats can easy be done now by just kill them and get more reward. If you go also for attacks, try target French forts. They are the most easy ones. Even the level 12 fort in bottom left can be soloed with a good ship. Sure go for Dutch forts too if you are strong or have backup friends. Now to show shortly how easy are the liaison roving done now since they removed the mark fast travel close to marked spot where you supposed to delivery silver in return and just kill one of them. By the way, as if you follow my infinite silver strategy that will show right after liaison and fort attack, always check and buy from vendors, ammo, food, and water. You can afford it at any time if follow my strat to sell gold rum and black opium to den leaders. If you take all supply roving quests, you will get so much helm materials that will get you overweight on brigantine. So consider swap ship before, as it is a one-minute mission anyway. 
You want to constantly focus farm helm materials outside your collecting route time investment or delivery supply. This to not reach never a bottleneck, neither on buff supply delivery to factory or infinite silver strat. So any helm material is good as reward. Sure, in general, more valuable are berries and tobacco as they are required buff a high level factory, but still even puppy and sugar are mandatory to maintain passively infinite silver by producing gold rum and black opium at your laboratory or distillery. Like said, French forts are easier, can be soloed any of them with a good ship. You can always use command call for help in server either from the map on fort icon holding button F, or you can spyglass the fort in fight and have option hold button to call for help from randoms in server. There is also a trick with attack quests if want to take advantage of it. As you know, the attack tab on supply network resets after some time since you picked up a fort quest attack. Well, you can actually pick in fort attack and invest time somewhere else, wait for a reset of supply network page, and then at reset try to pick again and accept same fort to attack. The quest rewards will stack for the whole day, so you can stack three quests on same fort and get three times the reward by just finish the plunder once. Another note, as a single player you are not allowed to sink your ship during a plunder, otherwise plunder will fail. But if you sink while are in a party and your party member does not sink till plunder is complete, even if it shows on your screen you failed you get reward at end of plunder. Important is one guy from party never sink till end, and then all members get the reward. Now to the infinite silver strategy. Is as simple as it sounds, but you must keep produce in your hideout both gold rum and black opium. Every time you go back, then check your hideout to restart production if need. So the gold rum you want to sell to John Skurlock, the leader of the first den. Be aware you must have the materials on your inventory before speak with the leaders, or they will not give you option to sell them. The leaders do not identify what you have in storages. So for that may be a good thing, it is again swap your ship with higher storage one before try sell to leaders. In this way can save you speak multiple times with them when sell large quantities. Just by selling the high tier rum and opium to leaders carried me in the game 200 hours. I have never cared for or farm for silver and in the meantime did buy anything I want from vendors like ammo, food, repair kits, water, etc. So basically, all of those consumables are infinite too as long as you keep producing passively gold rum and black opium. Remember most important, do not sell low tiers, only gold rum and black opium, and secondly, do not confuse leaders products as you will get less silver if you do. You always want to sell gold rum to Skurlock from the first den and black opium to Rama in the second den. As for production of rum and opium, if you follow my strat, you should not reach never a bottleneck of any resource and keep producing huge quantities passively. Remember, empire upgrades make a difference too. Also how efficient you farm for helm materials. There is also another way to supply fast with few helm materials that I will show next. Although it is not necessarily maybe on dead times you want to do it if you have a good ship. The idea is to take orders and not rush deliver but to kill a lot of rogues on the way. By taking the order from order registry, you have fast travel disabled and on the way to destination, rogues spawn constantly on you. All those rogues drop helm materials in lower quantities, but they stack well to hundreds if you do a rogues farming session. In the end, deliver your order quest and count the loot. By the way, currently it is not necessary to carry the materials for orders you take from the order registry. That is because you deliver to an outpost. That guy there that waits for you does identify your storage. So there is no point carrying materials, but be sure you have enough materials in storage before you leave the den, and also mark your destination before leaving the den as the quest mark will not track destination when going outside den, 
as Quest Tracker does not identify materials outside den. If you are farming rogues during orders delivery, try engage into mid-range or close-range combat as if you stay in long range, cannot pick up loot fast after a kill. I will show my main brigantine build right after this rogue order delivery in a couple of seconds. Full details about my guns, armor, and furniture. Although it is briefly presented, we'll not go into depth explanations of choices in this video, but I will do full build guides in my next videos dedicated to my Skull and Bone Ships builds for Brigantine, Sambuck, Snow, and Padawakam. I am waiting for Season 1 start on 27 February, so I can proper test all content in Season or new items we have access. Soon after it, I will start post video guides during season. The reason I am holding a bit with more guides, it is that we might get at the season start significant changes and then some choices can be obsolete if I do videos before season start. Like said order delivery works just fine without carrying the items on you as can see me at the final destination. The overseas smuggler identify the storage. Now my whole Brigantine ship main build followed by a short part presenting all the consumables I use. Then right after it also what I usually buy from vendors, the black market on Den Manager showing the items you can buy with sovereign currency, items that I do use and build. If do not have access to any or some of my items then I strongly recommend play the cheap option but strong, the fire bombards rank two or rank three if you are high level. The fire bombards can carry you till end game and even there they perform very good. Regarding armor alternative, you can grab the Royal Custodian armor high level that is very easy to get as it drops constant on the co-op takeover event. Repair kits. I recommend to have two types on you. One with low cooldown for teasing fights and one high heal higher cooldown but do not use Enhanced Repair 3. It is very bad with such long cooldown. I suggest use Enhanced 1 as short cooldown repairs and Enhanced 2 for high heals. If you are early game and might be too expensive at that point to use Enhanced Repairs 1 and 2, then use Normal Repair 2 and 3 instead. Stamina Food 45% Spam Grilled Food Chicken and Vegetables you can infinite buy them raw from vendors and then cook in to grilled versions. Water same infinite from vendors if follow my infinite silver strategy. Remember on the route I made, you also have few factories like Citrana or Palisade Bay that actually sell ammunition. Be mindful to grab them always specially if play bombards. This way you preserve infinite ammo, recover any ammo you used, kill rogues on collecting coins route. At both dens, you have managers that are waiting outside your hideout. On them, you can buy items from the black market. There, you can also use the sovereign currency for some very strong items, not only the currency pieces of eight. Check the market as some of the items cost sovereign currency. All my build items except for Ghost Ship Blue Spectre Gun can be found here either to buy as item or blueprint. I did have unlocked all the items and ships in game, but like said, I am waiting on season start on the 27th of February to start create video guides about ship builds, furniture, armors, and guns. As we might get new options or things changed, we'll see. Thank you for watching and for support. Fair winds and following seas, pirates.